So here we want to sketch a graph of the polar equation, and our polar equation is r equals 6 divided by 2 sine theta minus 3 cosine theta. And then over here I have a polar coordinate system that we can use to sketch a graph of the polar equation. Now at first glance, when looking at this polar equation, it doesn't seem to be in the form of any special polar graphs that we know. It doesn't look like it's in the form of a circle or a limousine or anything else that we can easily recognize if you're familiar with special polar graphs and their corresponding polar equations, okay? Now we're not gonna take a look at those in this video. If you wanna learn more about special polar graphs, then you wanna check out my lesson video on polar graphs. But in this video, we're going to take a slightly different approach. Since we can't recognize this polar equation to be any type of special polar graph, what we can do to help us get a better picture of what the graph might look like for this polar equation is convert it into a rectangular equation. And we can do that by remembering what the conversion formulas are for converting from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. And those conversion formulas look like this. We know that x equals r times cosine theta and y equals r times sine theta. And so what we want to do with this polar equation, which is currently in terms of r and theta, we want to rewrite it in terms of x and y. And so anywhere we can find r times cosine theta or r times sine theta, we want to replace that with x and y respectively. Now currently, the way our polar equation is expressed, I don't see r times cosine theta or r times sine theta, right? I just see sine theta and cosine theta. But what we can do with this polar equation is manipulate it a little bit, specifically if we multiply both sides of the equation by this denominator. And so let me show you what I mean by that. If we multiply both sides of the equation by the quantity two sine theta minus three cosine theta, we'll get this. We'll have r times two sine theta minus three cosine theta, and that will be equal to six. Right? If we multiply this side of the equation by this quantity, it would cancel out with itself, just leaving us with 6, and then multiplying it by r on the other side of the equation gives us this. Now, if we distribute r through this quantity, meaning we multiply it by both of these terms, then something very interesting is going to appear in this polar equation. And so let's do that. We're going to have 2r times sine theta, right? r times 2 sine theta is 2r sine theta, and then we'll multiply r by negative 3 cosine theta, which will be negative 3r cosine theta. So we'll have minus 3r cosine theta, and that's all equal to 6. Now, look what we have in this polar equation. We have an expression of r sine theta and an expression of r cosine theta, the two things that we know what they're equal to in terms of x and y, for a rectangular equation, right? Take a look at our conversion formulas here from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. X is equal to R cosine theta, which we can find right here, and Y is equal to R sine theta, which we can find right here. So we can replace R sine theta with Y and R cosine theta with X, and watch what happens. We'll have two times Y minus three X equals six. Okay, and so now we have a rectangular equation in terms of x and y that is equivalent to our polar equation, all right? They're both going to have the same graph. And so since we are more familiar with the rectangular coordinate system, working with a rectangular equation is going to be very helpful in giving us an idea of what the graph of this polar equation will look like, okay? And right away, by looking at this rectangular equation, we can make the conclusion that we have a linear function. So the graph of this equation is going to be a line of some kind, right? Both x and y are raised to the first power. This is a linear equation. And so let's solve for y here, and that should make it pretty clear how we could graph this line. I'll start by adding 3x to both sides of the equation. So if we do that, we'll continue over here. We'll have 2y is equal to 3x plus 6. And then we can divide both sides by 2 to solve for y. And so we'll have 3 halves times x. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3. So I'm just going to erase this 2, erase that, and this. And we'll write 3 halves plus 3. 
right? That's what we get when we solve for y in this equation. And so what we have here should be a very familiar linear equation that you have worked with in algebra. We have y equal to some value times x plus a constant. This is y equals mx plus b, the equation of a line. And so if you remember, b, or in this case, 3, is the y-intercept for the line. It's where the line crosses the y-axis. And 3 halves, the coefficient of x, is m, or the slope of the line, rise over run. Okay, and so we can actually graph this polar equation pretty easily by just graphing the line that this linear equation represents. It's going to be the same thing. So, to make it a little bit easier on ourselves, I'm going to include a rectangular grid system to our coordinate system here. And now what we can do is graph the line represented by this rectangular equation, which will be the same graph for this polar equation, since we just converted from this equation to this equation, they should have the same graph. All right, so our y-intercept is 3. So if we go to the y-axis here, it's the same as the vertical axis for the polar coordinate system. y equals 3 will be 1, 2, 3 right here. So our line is going to cross through the y-axis right there. But now let's account for the slope. It's 3 divided by 2, or 3 halves which means that we will rise three units and then run two units, okay? So if we wanna plot some points on this line, we would rise three, so one, two, three, and then run two, one, two. And so that would be another point on this line. And you could do the opposite movement in this direction to get another point. So you'd go down three and then two in the negative direction, so one, two. So there would be another point. So I'll plot that. It looks like our line is going to cross through the x-axis at x equals negative 2. This would be negative 1 and then negative 2. And then let's plot one more point. We'll go down 3 again, 1, 2, 3, and then over 2 in the negative direction. And that will be the last point that I plot. But then we can connect our points, and our line will look something like this. That is the line y equals 3 halves times x plus 3, but it is also r equals 6 divided by 2 sine theta minus 3 sine theta. These two equations are equivalent, just one is in polar form and the other is in rectangular form, so they will have the same graph, which is a line. And it's way easier to graph a line when working with a rectangular equation than with a polar equation. But if you're not convinced that this is the graph of this polar equation, try plugging in values of theta and getting corresponding values of r and plotting points in this polar coordinate system. All right, get a couple points, see where they lie. They should form a line just like we have drawn right here. Okay, but this is the graph of this polar equation. That is one method that you can use to quickly sketch the graph of a polar equation. If you're not sure what type of shape it represents, try converting the equation into a rectangular equation that can help you get a better picture or a better idea of the graph you may be working with. Now, of course, you have to be familiar with the graphs of rectangular equations, but it's most likely the case that if you're in calculus two, you at least have seen most rectangular graphs by this point. Okay, but that's about it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And if you wanna learn more about polar graphs and polar coordinates, be sure to check out my Calculus 2 playlist. You can find all of my Calculus 2 videos there, including all of my videos on polar graphs and polar coordinates. All right, so feel free to check that out. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.